meteor crater. So what made this massive hole? Scientists believe that half a billion years ago, a collision occurred in the asteroid belt. An iron-nickel fragment spun off into space. Eventually, the 150-foot-wide meteor sped through the atmosphere. Luckily, about 50,000 years ago, Arizona was uninhabited. Impact. And shockwave. The meteorite crater was formed in an instant. It hit with an excessive force greater than 20 megatons of TNT, and it left this crater at almost 700 feet deep. But now due mainly to wind erosion, it is 550 feet deep, two and three quarter miles in circumference. The meteorite's calling card you'll find just 40 miles east of Flagstaff. You are at Meteor Crater one of the best preserved, the first proven and best preserved craters in the world. A hundred years ago, of course, the crater was still thought to have been volcanic. It wasn't until 1961 that it was proven an impact crater as opposed to uh, something non-impact. Picture 20 football games being played simultaneously on the floor of the crater while two million spectators watch on the sides. That's how big it is. It's also a scientist's dream. Since it's only 50,000 years old, uh, geologically speaking, like it happened yesterday, if this had occurred 100 million years ago, uh, these rocks would be weathered, and, and it, it'd be hard to, to trace what happened to them. And what the meteorite did to the Earth and those rocks is rare. But what IMPACT did was, was rearrange those. So now the oldest is now on the top. We call that inverted stratigraphy at an IMPACT crater. And really, IMPACT cratering is the only way to really do that in nature, to take something older and put it on top of something younger. Through the years, Meteor Crater has also served as a training ground for NASA. The astronauts used to train here before they arrived on the moon or got to the moon to learn geology. Basically, they were not geologists, I think aside from one or two, they were mostly test pilots. But geology was very important for them to know so that they could recognize an impact crater once they got to the moon. And by doing so, they could collect and bring home some of the older moon rock. But today, they come out here periodically every September, just about, to test different equipment for their future attempts to go to Mars, and also to learn topographical terrain, the geology of the crater itself. At times, the visitors are even invited to watch the scientists in action. Tourists are also encouraged to check out the impressive visitor center, which includes Astronaut Park and another piece of space history. That is the real Apollo test capsule, and uh, we have it there on loan from NASA. That was how the astronauts used to land when they first started going into space and, and of course, to the moon. For me, as a scientist who studies impact craters, uh, I've been here many times, but it's still a breathtaking sight uh, to stand on the rim and, and look around. And mainly, even when I'm driving up, when I'm in the plains a few miles away, driving up to, uh, to Meteor Crater, uh, it, to me, it looks like the pictures of Mars and, and the moon. There's only one Meteor Crater, um, and it's right here in Arizona, right here in northern Arizona. Out of those 180 impact craters we know on the Earth, uh, this is the best one. As far as what happened to that meteorite that day so long ago? Your experts today, your top-notch experts, agree and disagree on what happened to it. What makes most sense to me was that 90% of it vaporized upon impact. And one thing that is sure not to disappear, a curiosity for that big hole in the ground. Everyone reacts to the crater differently. Uh, some love the idea of the astronauts training here. Some don't even realize that they trained here. Others love the fact that the movie Starman was filmed here. I think that's what fascinates a lot of people, the fact that it is from something out of this world, right here in Arizona. 